Welcome back. It is time for Wise Guys Wednesday. And till today, Paul Quiat is here. We're learning about semiconductors, huh? Uh, actually, last oh. night, semiconductors. Man. Okay. Sorry. So, so we started off, we've been talking about how you measure temperature Heat with a bunch though, of thermometers. Yeah. And last time we talked about digital thermometers, and we said they work with semiconductors. And the way the semiconductors work is that normally they don't really have any free electrons. And in fact, I had this first slide. It's kind of a summary of things. Um, that all the electrons are stuck in this valence band, they're not free, and then if you add a little bit of heat, you pop some of them up to this upper band, this conduction band, and then they can move. And you don't really put very many up, it's only about one in a billion or something like that, uh, but that's enough that you, it really changes the resistance of the material, because you have charge, so things can, f can flow. If you don't have any charge, then things don't flow, and then you have a very high resistance. And so the resistance drops very quickly with temperature. So metals, it turns out, are really different. So if you just do the next slide here, so in a metal, uh, that upper band has a lot of free electrons, basically one per atom instead of only one in a billion. And what happens then is increasing the temperature doesn't really change that much because there's already so many, so adding an extra one in a billion doesn't do anything. But what it does do is it causes the material to vibrate more. And what does that vibration do? Well, it causes the electrons to scatter, there's more resistance, and so now if we increase the temperature, actually the resistance goes up instead of going down. So okay. if we come back to us, I've got a bunch of demos about this. Cool. Okay, so this is just a model of a, uh, what you might think of a, of a resistor, uh, of a metal. So uh, I, these are going to be electrons that are going through. Yeah, and they scatter off of things. And this would be having like a low voltage where it's not very tilted, so they don't go very fast. And this would be like putting a high voltage on the thing, so they're trying to go a little bit faster. And this is, let's say, at low temperature. And if I wanted to say what this looked like at high temperature, I would jitter this a lot. And if I do that, it takes a lot longer for the thing to get to the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Right? So that's like raising the temperature of the metal. It's going to increase the resistance, and we're going to get less current. OK. OK, so let's demonstrate that with an actual thing. So I have here, uh, this is just a, a coil of wire that we have. And we're going to need to look at our uh, little monitor again. And at the moment, this has a resistance of 79 ohms. And I'm just going to heat this up. And according to what we just saw, if I heat it, there's going to be more vibrations in the thing. The electrons aren't going to go through as well. The resistance should go up. Okay. So again, if I look at the display, if I heat this thing, there it goes, it's going up. In fact, it's going up. You know, it's not a huge amount because I'm not heating it very much. It's just of the normal hair dryer. Yeah. Okay. And it we, does the job. It does the job. Okay. I also brought, again, some liquid nitrogen Here with we us. Go. Liquid nitrogen, 77 Kelvin, which is... Very cold. Minus 321 oh, Fahrenheit. You figured okay. it out? <laughs> minus 321. So minus. Don't, wow. don't touch that. Yeah, stuff. that would be dangerous. Okay, so okay. again, if I put this in here, that's really going to quiet down all those jitters. It's kind of like meditation for the <gasps> metal, I guess. Yeah. There it goes. Real fast. Wow. So the resistance is going down, which means this thing's becoming quite a conductor. It's becoming a much better, it's a somewhat better conductor. Okay, it doesn't go, you know, this is not, you know, getting as cold as it could be because it's only liquid nitrogen. You can get colder than that. And in fact, so this is probably about as low as it's going to get at the moment. Um, in fact, if you, if you go to our last slide, so there's a thing that if you get metals really cold, in many cases, uh, that resistance will drop exactly to zero. So for example, if you take mercury and you get it to four degrees Kelvin, uh, the resistance goes exactly all the way to zero there's really no resistance you can start a current in one of these things and it'll go for years and years and years in wow. four degrees kelvin what is that about in fahrenheit for those of us who uh that's minus 455 uh, or something wow 450 ish yep. <laughs> okay negative 450 yeah. degrees and so, so wow. one application of this for example if you've ever get on an mri they put you in this big machine and they need really big magnetic fields and to do that you have a current a big current running and if you had to pay for that power it would be very expensive so they start the current in a superconductor then they cool it that current just runs forever, or at least whatever, many, many years, and then they don't have to pay the power bill for the current. What? They still have to pay the power bill for the refrigeration to keep the thing cold. Huh. huh. So, <laughs> one big use of that. blew our minds. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Very awesome. interesting. All right, Paul, oh, thank you thanks. so much. Always fun? Always fun. Yeah, always fun. See you guys later. We're always learning something with you. I love it. Absolutely. I hope so. We'll be right back.